lightnings and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. You ever, uh, you ever sturgeon fish before? No, it's my first really? time. You know what they look like? Kind of like a carp. Somewhat with whiskers. Okay. Kind of like you after four hours of not shaving. <laughs> right. for today, get out of the boat, jump in the water, catch some dinosaurs. Just made it to what we are hoping is going to be our first spot to fish. The ships have swung, tide's starting to run out, and today we're targeting sturgeon, but not in the ways we've done it in the past. Today I'm joined by Kelly Barnum and Dwayne England from Fish Hunt Northwest, and we're going to be trying to catch sturgeon wading in the water just like what I'm sure you've seen guys out there targeting tarpon and bonefish on the flats. Why not do it here in Oregon? So we're gonna see if we can't sneak up here on some shallow water. We gotta be real careful because the tide's gonna drop out about six, seven feet here today. And if we're not paying attention, this boat could be high and dry and we'll be out here for a long time. Hey, we got waders on. We'll just keep fishing if the boat gets stuck. <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I can't sneak up here and oh, start to shallow up already and get us up on top of this first flat. We'll go over some gear and talk about what we're doing. It's been a long Hold time. A well, I was trying to tie a bull. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta watch this. Don't watch. It's been a long time since I've tied a real knot. Show me again. Hoopa, tie me a sheep shank, Hoopa. <laughs> so even though it's showing 2.6 right here, that's from the bottom of the boat. So I use my little poker stick. It goes down about right there. So that's gonna be above our waders. So we're gonna keep on going here, see if we can find a little bit shallower water. Belly button height. Yeah. That's better. And it's well, gonna drop. Me and you, Barnum. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on my tippy toes. Here's the snorkel. <laughs> these change all the time. These sandbars out here change. Uh, the little channels that run through the sandbars change. And especially at a point where we're at right now, where you're at the top end of the tide, as this tide drops, it's gonna drop really fast off of this flat. And if you're not in a position to be able to exit the flat, you're gonna spend six hours parked on sand. Nobody wants to be that guy. No, and in fact, I'm really not liking the looks of that. Just a month ago when I was here, I, I was going through here, no problem, but I'm, I, I'm gonna go back the way we came and get up in that deeper water. We're just gonna go out and around. Yeah, I'm chewing up sand right now. Yeah, you guys, get to the front for me. You know, sometimes you need a sandblast the bottom of the boat, clean up those props. Look at that graph right now. You would think we were sitting right on a beach. We pretty much are. Yeah. Be back here in an hour, it will be a beach. I think 
There's one more high spot I gotta get over before I drop into that ditch. Let me get a rundown of the setup since you guys have not used it before. Um, basic slip bobber. Yeah. So this is a two ounce fish field bobber. It's just like you do salmon steelhead fishing, slides up and down. Oh, we can easily adjust. Uh, we're gonna set our bobber stops here in just a second, but down below, I got a second bobber stop set up right here. And that gives us a little bit of slide, a little play for our slider. Okay. So what's gonna happen is once it hits bottom, instead of like on the normal rigs where the slider is going to be tight to your bead chain, mm -hmm. because the current and your tension here is pulling that tight like this. In this case, the bobber's gonna be pulling it tight to the upper stop. So that way when the fish bites, you're gonna see it immediately on the bobber. Oh, so what I like to do is most times I want my bobber laying sideways, just like bobber dogging. So it's almost like a tip up ice fish and just goes pop, yep. pop straight up. That way there's almost no resistance when those fish grab it. You see it immediately, you can reel down and get on that fish. All right, uh, baits, you guys can stuff them in your pockets. Just throw a bag of anchovies in your pockets. Okay. We'll pull the boat up here and then we'll go fishing. There you go. I'm looking right now at this current and as eager as we are to get out there, safety first, hence the life jackets too, but we might need to wait for this current to slow down a little bit. And the way it's gonna slow down is by a sandbar upstream of us starting to become exposed. As soon as it does, that'll slow down that current coming through here. We can walk a little bit easier. You know, it looks okay right now. It's pretty flat water, but I was tossing my bobber out there just to give it a look. And the bobber's getting pulled underneath. But two ounce bobber's getting pulled underneath. That's some pretty swift current. So I think we'll just back off, pull the anchor up, back down a little bit, do this the old fashioned way. and. Maybe just wait just a little bit longer before we jump out of the boat. We got all the gear ready, so we'll be ready as soon as the current slows down, but safety first. Oh yeah, no problem now. That's way better. See the bobber boys? Oh, that's money right there, look at that. We are good. I got my anchovies. Grab one each. There you go. I'll get some scissors too, just in case you need to cut a leader. Oh yeah, I'm on the bottom. I'm good. <laughs> get oh, shallower yeah. up here. That's where I'm going. This is, <laughs> monumental. this is something else right now. As soon as I get the boat positioned here, the first thing I'm going to go out there and go suggest to those guys, you know, these fish, they're, they're lazy. They live for a hundred years, right? They're not going to make any effort to try and chase down and find bait. They're just letting the current flush them up on the incoming and back out on the outgo. So what they need to be doing right now is casting to the left or to the right. They're casting directly downstream of themselves, which means that those fish are going to have to come by their feet and most likely get spooked off before they get down to their bait. So casting to the sides helps out a lot. <laughs> I don't want it to auto inflate my life jacket. All right. Okay, come on. Touch bottom. <laughs> there it is. I wanted to make sure I didn't set off the auto inflate. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah! Oh, slow down. Slow down, slow down. Oh, so I went all back up shallower. Yeah, let's get shallower. Boy, this little guy, he's, he's probably about keeper size, but he just about spooled me. There he is. Okay, there we go. First one of the day right here. Oh, I gotta get wet. These things are so prehistoric when you roll them over on their back like this, rub their belly a little bit. They'll just be nice and calm and relaxed. It's really cool. See, this fish is pretty fresh out of the ocean. You can tell that by the color, but also how sharp and translucent those scoots are. It's a very healthy fish. That's probably right about 48, 50 inches, probably right in that range from tip the nose to the fork. Yeah. Long, buddy. There he goes. Oh, I'm soaked. First one of the day, but I don't care because guess what? We're flats fishing. You see this in Florida. You see it out in the Pacific Islands, Pacific Northwest. Don't see anybody out here doing this. So why not? We're out here. The water's calm. The current's not running too hard waist deep water. Why not mix it up a little bit and have some fun. That little 48 inch fish, little four footer, just about spooled me. Fishfield is your one stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond.
from salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. You know, the weirdest part is walking on these flats and all of a sudden you'll come to like a, a hole in the sand. And they're about this big around, maybe 18 inches wide and about six inches deep. And it, the only thing we can figure it's where sturgeon have been feeding. They've been sitting there in that area, filtering that sand, trying to pull out the clams or whatever else they're feeding on on this flat. And it's weird to walk along here and feel how many of them there actually are. I mean, about every fourth or fifth step, you step in one of those holes. So one would have to assume that this entire flat is just dimpled with them. You talked to me about doing this when you guys did it, I believe, last year. And then we kind of talked on the phone as we were searching for fish this year about, you know, pulling out the bobbers and doing it with bobbers. And yep. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure guys have done it before in yeah. some capacity, but the way that we got this rigged, it's, it's done intentionally. You know, it's it's a way for us to manage the bait, manage the presentation, but not have to manage the rod tip or... Right. Uh, I started doing this because it was in the boat with slack water, lots right. of wind, no current. So if the boat's spinning around, you can't keep the rod tip still to keep the bait still. Right. So how do you keep the bait still? Throw a bobber out there, put it a foot deeper than the depth of the water, yeah. let the bobber lay on its side and just let it hunt. Them lines can lay slack or do whatever and it just doesn't matter. Yeah, let out 20 feet of slack, who cares? The right. bobber's fine. We're gonna make a quick little move here. Yeah, we did just land a fish, but sturgeon, you need current. Current is what brings you new fresh fish all throughout a tide. When you run out of tide, run out of current, time to move. Well, we're coming up over here to one of my favorite sturgeon spots and uh, it looks like the hole's already taken. There's a big old whale hanging out here. We're in five feet of water. So that tells us two things, one, what an incredible day, whether we don't catch another fish or not. Doesn't matter, this is awesome to have a whale this close to us, really cool. Boat's in neutral, just kind of hanging out and he's just swimming around and he's feeding on anchovies. What are the sturgeon feeding on? Anchovies. So, yeah, there you go, spouting right back there. So, after we're done hanging out with him, it's just too cool. Who cares about fish right now? This is part of the fun of being out here on the waters. You get experiences like that. I mean, how many people around the world can say that they've had a whale swim underneath the boat twice. This is this is cool in five feet of water. It's unbelievable. So we're gonna take a quick moment here and talk about how to rig up an anchovy, but first let's talk about the line. We went over the bobber rig and whatnot, but the line is very important when it comes to sturgeon fishing, especially down here in the estuary. Line, you need braided line for your main line for sensitivity so you can see those light bites, but you definitely need Dacron for your leader and a long section of it. You don't need a long section of it to get the right presentation, you need a long section of this line because these fish are very sharp. Their scoots are sharp since these are fish fresh out of the ocean and having that long section allows you to protect your maximum braided line up here, which has a thinner diameter, allows you to use less lead, but having this thick, heavy Dacron and six feet of it or so down at the end for your leader will help keep those scoots off of your main line. So let's talk about rigging up your anchovies. I like using these baits just because they're very durable. They can last a long time. Now when they get soft, sometimes the bellies will get eaten out, but hey, you still got scent down there, it'll still work. So there's a hard spot right here between the eyes. And we're gonna put the hook point right there in the soft spot behind the skull and come out through the hard point. There we go. Then we're gonna lay the hook flat along the top of the bait, just like so. Next, we're gonna create some half hitches. All I do is take two fingers, make a loop, create that hitch, put it through, pull it tight. Not too tight, just tight enough. We're gonna do that three or four times here. What that does is it helps keep the bait 
laying perfectly flat and straight on the bottom. And that's important. One, so your bait isn't twisting in the current. And two, creates a nice little bait for those fish when they come up to suck it up. It goes in their mouth a lot easier. So that right there is our rigged up anchovy. I'm going to go join the boys in the water, see if we can avoid any whales. We're searching for fish. I mean, we're a uh, thing with this uh, early summer sturgeon fishery around here. When you find fish, you're normally on fish. Uh, if you're going 15, 20 minutes without a bite, you need to find fish. So we're on the hunt. I'm bringing Chovy back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right now we're back in the boat fishing the old school way for sturgeon. And the reason why is because we're at low slack. Now we're waiting for the water level to come up and the current start pushing these fish up onto these flats like what we're seeing right now here up on the sandbar that we were just out there taking a look at. So what happens is these fish, they flush off these flats, drop down into this six, eight, 12, 15 feet of water. Then as the tide starts to flush back in, it pushes them up on top. But right now we're actually still fishing the bobber rods and the reason why is because we have a little bit of wind and not much current. So that makes the boat unstable. It's moving left and right, up and down. So with these bobber rods, once you get them out there, you just make the bobber stop about a foot or two deeper than the depth of water that you're fishing. Open the bail up, let about an extra 10 feet of line out, click it back over, then you can just kick back, relax. The boat can swing left, can swing right. The bobbers are always fishing, keeping your bait perfectly still. We have one rod out that does not have a bobber set up on it. And what's happening is as the boat's swinging, it's coming tight and dragging the bait across the bottom, pulling it away from the fish, not looking natural. And then when we swing back the other way, it goes slack, can't even see a bite. So these bobber rods work great, not just when you're up there on the flats like we were earlier, but even in situations like this, when you have almost no current and a little bit of wind and you can't keep your bait stable. So the bobber setups work excellent for that situation as well. As the water comes up here, probably in the next hour, we're gonna jump back out of the boat, see if we can't hunt them down on these flats. You're gonna run up on you and then yeah. he's gonna go again. Pick them all up. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> Dude, that was head high. <laughs> wow. Did you hear me yell? He's going to jump right here. <laughs> Whoa, going again. Well, I know it's catch and release, but isn't that why you do it? Hey, look at this. Oh, my God. Dinosaurs. Okay, Kelly, here you go, bud. I know we got the hook clear. There he is. There he is. Yeah, he's what? He might be a little over. He might be right out. 48, 52, somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. Nice fish, man. The barbels. Dude, that jump. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. why we come out here. Is that guys, right there? Yeah, even when you can't keep them, I mean, they're so fun to catch. Especially in the shallower water. Yeah. I mean, they scream, they scream drag. Spinning They're, rods, bobbers. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time.
There we go. Yeah. See, we want to catch them off the beach, and we're going to get there in a little bit, but... Oh, we're going to get there. At least we're catching a few fish right now. Well, yeah, you set that hook, and it was just solid. <laughs> we're on them. Yeah. Right where they should be. That'll work. I'm glad we're catching fish right now. It's number two really quick. It's awesome, but I'm ready to get back out there on the flats. We can't do that quite yet. It's still too shallow water. So, hey, we're catching fish on bobbers. Great time. Dwayne's on one right now. There it is. But I'm ready to get back out there. Double! Double! <laughs> over, under, over, under, over, under. Oh, yeah, he's under the boat. I just saw him swim over here. <laughs> he's out. He's jumping. Jumping. Now he knows he's hooked. Fish out! <laughs> Those are both five footers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's happening here? Oh, yeah. He's just <laughs> Yeah, get off from underneath the boat. He starts. He's gonna take off. Be ready. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Coming to you. Thank you, Kelly. No problem. See, a lot of people don't know that sturgeon have ampullae of Lorenzini just like sharks. These little, uh, they're gel-filled pores here in the tip of their nose that help them sense vibration. You know, for the prey they eat, I don't know why that's important, but for whatever reason, whether it's, maybe it helps them find clams. I don't know. Could just be an evolutionary leftover from the dinosaur days. Fire away. All right. Thanks, buddy. Woo! He is ready to go too. <laughs> yeah! Love this stuff. Boys, now the question is do we move up? We could. We can get back on the beach. Well, and see we, if could, we, can't get we don't even have to get on the beach. We could go, well, it's going to get deep fast. No, just go right on the beach. It's two feet of water right there. You know, all these, we know these fish are all going right, yeah, right up it. there. I mean, just want to catch them out of the boat. Yeah, that's what we came here to catch them on the beach. I really want to keep yeah. catching them off the beach. So let's yeah. go do it. Even let's if we catch it. less, it's still right. more fun. Yeah, well, that's why we came. But as the tide goes on, there's going to be more and more fish up there. Right. Okay, pick them up. Hours of work for that moment, and I failed. It's amazing how fish this big's up here in this shallow water. Oh, he might. He oh, might. oh, oh yeah. <laughs> nice big tail. <laughs> it's pretty big. Yeah, I can't, I mean, I can't turn him. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't really pulled too much line yet. No. He may not know he's hooked yet. <laughs> it's much more intense in the water. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> oh, he's not done. Hi, buddy. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up close and personal, huh? <laughs> Look at this thing. That's a that's a, that's big a fish. good fish. He might have a tag. Too. Oh, does he have a tag? Oh, uh oh, uh oh. He oh might boy. go. Oh boy. He might go. <laughs> Underneath. You know, I think a guy could do this and probably do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to high stick him though. <laughs> Dude, it is something special being in the water with this fish. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna pop okay. this hook out, then I'm gonna hand you the mouth. Okay. I'll try and grab the tail. Okay. Okay. Got him in the bone. There you go. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yep. Oh, whoa. I got it. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> Pet his belly. Pet his belly. <laughs> okay, we got it. There he is, buddy. There he is. <laughs> he is tagged. Oh, he does have a tag yeah, on him. Yeah. Little wire tag. Yeah. That'd be cool to get info on him. There he is. Lower Columbia River sturgeon. Was it fun coming out here in waders? 
It's <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's so killer. <laughs> That's that awesome. worth it. <laughs> I've caught a lot of these things and I've literally never done this. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the fun is that we have caught hundreds, if not right. thousands, of sturgeon out of the boat, sitting in deeper water, catching them. But there's something special coming through and fishing waist deep water yeah. or less. Right. Yeah, the boat's floating. We can make that work. Right. But why not come out here and get on their level, have a completely different yeah. angle, just that difference in three feet? Yeah. Way different fight. Dude. The main thing is just take a fishery that, I mean, we've been doing for years and that we've, you know, pretty much dialed in and just add something to it to make it even more yeah. exciting. Freshen it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Make it new again. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Thanks for coming out with doing this with us. No problem.